There was a man and a woman. They met at the age of 27, he, she at 25. Seemed to hit it off. She worked at a uh, courthouse at the time as a secretary, and he was a sharecropper up here in Nebraska. They were getting kind of interested in each other, but along came World War II, and he was drafted. He was one of the first drafted, and uh, in fact it was so close and so much dire need of troops that instead of giving him the six, six weeks basic training, they gave him three weeks, and they said, that's all we can afford. You 5,000 men, get over to Africa, and off they went. Single ship, all by itself, going to Africa. He had a lot of sad and bad stories, I kid you not. But he made it out alive. And back, and they married. Well, they tried to have children. They had three miscarriages. If you've ever had a miscarriage, my wife and I have, it cuts deep into your soul, and it takes years to heal, if ever. The, uh, they finally decided to adopt, and they went to an orphanage there in Lincoln, Nebraska. And... Uh, the uh, head he-bull there said, uh, you're too old to adopt anybody. By that time, uh, they were 40 years old. And they said, no, nah, just too late, too old. They wouldn't uh, let them adopt anybody. Okay. So uh, they went home and resigned themselves to be childless. They weren't the only ones, but they were. it still hurt them. Well, four years later, that orphanage got a new manager, new he bull, and uh, he called him up out of the blue. He said, "Are you still looking for uh, a small child?" They said, "Yeah, we'd consider it." And he said, "Well, he said we have a small boy here. He's four years old." He said, "Nobody wants him." Said, "We've shown him and had over two dozen families here in Nebraska look at him, and nobody wants him." Nobody wants him. Said you can't blame him, though. He'd been abused from day one. He, uh, at four years old, he couldn't walk yet. He couldn't talk, or his speech ability was less than a two-year-old. And he was still in a diaper. And he couldn't walk, though, was a major thing. He didn't say he was retarded, but he'd just never been given a chance. And they said, if we don't do something with him pretty quick, he's going to be institutionalized for the rest of his life. And he said, what I'm willing to do is, if you'll take him, uh, come down here and look, and if you like him, you can take him. No strings attached, no paperwork. Just take him and try it. And any day, any time you want, bring him back, no questions asked. And the state didn't do that back then. But they did at this time, and for him... And so they, uh, the older couple said, we'll take him. And, of course, he also had rashes all over his body, too. So, I mean, he was a mess, that kid. And so they, they got uh, to Grand Island, and they stopped, and they bought a tricycle. And they come on out here to a uh, farm near Imperial, where they were sharecropping at the time. Well, they kid-proofed the house the best they could, and they put that tricycle in the house, because he couldn't walk. Within a week, they had to put the tricycle outside because he was so fast and, and crashing into everything that they had to, for their own safety, get it outside. Within two weeks, he wasn't walking. He was running. They took him to a doctor in Benkelman. I believe it was a Dr. Batty. And in one week, the rashes were gone. Hmm. They then spent the rest of their lives educating and giving that kid common sense that you can't imagine. And that kid's grandmother would show up quite often. She was born in 1888. And she saw the world change. And she saw a government that was for the people turn against the people. She saw that, and she saw the lies, and she taught him never to trust government because it isn't trustworthy. How many lies do you have to listen to before you say no more? But she taught him a lot of wisdom. 
She taught him how to catch fish without a hook or a line. She taught him so many tricks and things to do with herbs and how to make a wood-burning fire last a lot longer so you don't have to get up in the middle of the night. Lots of tricks she taught him, and he learned them all. And an uncle that taught him how to trap and bring in some serious fur money when he was yet a kid and teach him to shoot. And his father taught him to throw a knife that he had learned over in Africa and spin one from hand to hand behind his back. That couple was a blessing to that boy. And that boy, yeah, it was me. Read this film.